Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to the doctor's office. The therapist will be with you momentarily. Now let us sing our song of healing. The Great Physician. The Great Physician now is near. The sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the drooping heart to cheer. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. Sweetest note in seraph song. Sweetest name on mortal tongue. Sweetest carol ever sung, Jesus, blessed Jesus. All glory to the dying Lamb. I now believe in Jesus. I love the blessed Savior's name. I love the name of Jesus. Sweetest note in seraph song. Sweetest name on mortal tongue. Sweetest carol ever sung. Jesus, blessed Jesus. Listen, his name dispels my guilt and fear. No other name but Jesus. Oh, how my soul delight to have the precious name of Jesus. He's the sweetest note. In seraph song, sweetest name on mortal tongue, sweetest carol ever sung, Jesus, blessed Jesus. And when he comes to bring the crown, the crown of life and glory, then by his side we will sit down and tell redemption story. Sweetest note in seraph song, sweetest name on Sweetest carol ever sung, Jesus, blessed Jesus. Amen. As Brother Malcolm Emily prepares to speak the spoken word, we introduce the therapist. Let us pray. Kind Heavenly Father, we thank you for this awesome opportunity, your Holy Sabbath day of rest. We thank you where we can worship you in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness. We ask that you bless this proceeding, bless, bless the service, bless the speaker, bless your message. Let it impute in our minds and our heart to sanctify us, to cleanse us, to draw us closer to you and further away from this world of sin. Help us to focus and meditate on you, the greatest physician, your holy word to imprint in our minds and our hearts so each day we can grow in you and to learn of you and to tell of others your love and your second coming. This we ask in Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we will read the spoken word. From our great physician, a psalm of David, Psalms 103. Could read along with me. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth my mouth with the good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. This is the word of the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Okay, we have our song of praise to the Most High God. I pray that you listen to the words. Is your burden heavy as you bear it all alone? Does the road you travel have dangers yet unknown? Are you growing weary in the struggle of it all? Reach out to Jesus. He's reaching out to you. Yes. He is always there, hearing yes. every prayer, faithful and it's true. Mm. Walking by outside. In his love we hide all the day through. Yes, when you get discouraged, just remember what to do. Reach out to Jesus. He's reaching out to you. Is the life you live in filled with sorrow and despair does the future press you with its worries and its scare are you tired and jealous have you almost lost your way reach out to jesus He's reaching out to you, and he is always there, hearing every prayer, faithful and is true. Walking by outside, in his love behind, all the day through. When you get discouraged, just Remember what to do. Reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus. Reach out to Jesus. He's reaching out to you. Have a blessed Sabbath, everyone. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Sadia, for the introduction, the scripture reading, and this very special meditation song. My friends, I am not the therapist today but he has appointed me a message to speak concerning him. And the power of the therapist is so wonderful that while I am speaking, he will be speaking to each and every one of you who is listening today. He has led you here today to view and to listen concerning him. And wherever you are, you will hear the voice of his spirit in your ear. So lay back. Get comfortable and pull up the Bible. And as we go through the spoken word today, 
I can guarantee you, if you are receptive today, the Holy Spirit, the great divine therapist, will perform divine therapy today for everyone who so desires. Let us pray, Father in heaven. I speak concerning you, not myself. And so I pray that your Holy Spirit will minister to all those who are listening right now. Bless this equipment that we are using. Let the stream go out successfully, dear Father. And I pray that everyone will receive your word today. And may your spirit, your Holy Spirit, minister to the hearts of the hurting, the sad, the angry, whatever, dear Father, the condition is of the human who's listening today. I pray that you will minister to us as we need it the most. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today is about healing, my brothers and my sisters. The Word of God on a daily basis takes various forms in the lives of the individual. And so God oftentimes uses His instruments to send out different types of messages for different types of situations. And the world that we are living in is filled with abuse, filled with people who are maligned, people who are sick, people who have suffered loss. And so I've entitled the message today, Divine Therapy. I am not the one performing it today, as I said, I am the one speaking concerning it. But my faith leads me to the belief that as I am speaking, whatever patient you are today, God will minister to you. There is no one greater than the other. He's ministering to everybody at the very same time. That's the therapist whose office we are all in right now. When you look at the word therapy, it is defined as treatment intended to relieve or heal a disorder. That is one definition of the word therapy that I want us to focus on today. Treatment intended to relieve. Or heal a disorder. What is a disorder? A state of confusion. Also, a disorder disrupts the systematic functioning or neat arrangement of. When God put the human together, it was a neat arrangement. Everything was supposed to work in sync for the benefit of the human being. What sin did was mar, destroy, and corrupt the neat arrangement of God. And so things have become a state of confusion within us all in the natural sense. And so when it is a state of confusion within us all, it brings a state of confusion among us. And so today we are soliciting divine therapy and of what the therapeutic method today that we are focusing on because there are many forms of therapy is psychotherapy psychotherapy def defined defined is a focus on changing problematic behavior changing feelings and thoughts by discovering their unconscious meaning and motivation. So one has a problem, one comes to the therapist, and there are visible problems that are seen. But the therapist aims to dig deeper, to uncover the unconscious meaning and motivation behind the problematic behavior of the patient. There are feelings and there are thoughts associated with the behavior. But what is important is the unconscious meaning, the unconscious motivation that is affecting the patient. Let us, de let us define some forms of therapy. Number one, there is cognitive therapy, which is the way we think affects how we feel. And so the therapeutic method focuses on present thinking, behavior, and communication rather than past experiences. The therapist aims to bring the thought process to the present and away from the past. 
helping the patient to relative problem solving in the present. Because the past is having a hold on the present. And the patient is continually thinking in the problematic past. And so when that patient is thinking in the problematic past, the present is also a problem. And so the therapist aims to have them think in the present, deal in the present, and solve in the present. There is also humanistic therapy, the approach to psychotherapy focusing on our individual nature as a human. Instead of the position that we have with classes or groups of people or among pairs with similar problems. It is a form of therapy that isolates the individual into dealing with the problem rather than leave them in a group, a group of people who may have similar problems. But there are no isolated solutions. So there is an isolation that takes place where one can focus on the problems as an individual, even though the problems are the same. There is also integrative therapy, a progressive form of psychotherapy that combines different therapeutic tools and approaches to fit the needs of an individual. Methods tailored to fit the individual that is progressive, taking them from stage to stage. That is integrative therapy. You've heard me use the word psychotherapy. The form of therapy that we are get, getting to today is the mental aspect of the human. Now, what is the goal of the therapist? The goal of the therapist ultimately is to heal. The goal of the therapist is to change the behavior of the patient. The goal of the therapist is to change the ability of the patient to cope with what they are dealing with. To facilitate decision making in the patient. And to establish and, and to have the patient establish and maintain relationships. All these things facilitate in the work of the therapist and to have the therapist achieve the goal in the patient. Now we are dealing with these things and mirroring them with what I regard today as the most supreme of all therapists, God Almighty. God is everything to us when it comes to the fact that our chaos on the inside is caused by this thing called sin. God wants to deal with us as a therapist would to a greater extent in that he is able to make whole that which was once broken. The Bible that you have before you today that we're about to read from, the Bible that you carry to church, the Bible app that you have in your phone has 66 books. And I look some of the information up concerning the Bible and I just take it as they give it. The Bible has 1,189 chapters. The Bible has 31,175 verses. The Bible has 810,697 words. The Bible has 3,566,480 letters. These are some facts that are shared concerning the Bible. The Bible is designed as a textbook to, number one, it, all, it knows the problem. It also has the solution. And the therapist through whom the healing will actually be done is described in this book. Whereby in it contains books. Everything that we need for the healing of the individual is found in the interaction with the Bible. So the solution is there 
It is not that the solution is not there. The solution is there. The problem lies within the application or the dedication of the patient to be healed. Dedication to be healed, an application of the principle that lies within the book. Now, I use the word actually. I said the therapist through whom the healing will actually be done. And that's an important word. Because to many people, the Bible is a list of stories. Stories that you and I cannot relate to. Men and women who exhibited great faith, who achieved many wonderful things. But we think of them as higher than us. We think of them as having a level above us. And we never believe that we can ever do the things that they did, believe in the way that they believe, and overcome in the way that they overcame. Even when the Bible tells us Elias was a man with like passions as us, it still doesn't register within our minds. When I tell you that the therapist within the books of this Bible is actually able to heal, I am telling the broken today that you can be healed. I am telling the sorrowful today that you can be comforted. I am telling the sick today that you can be healed. I am telling the angry today that you can be calmed down. I am telling the jealous today that you can get rid of the jealousy. I am telling the adulterer you can be healed. I am telling the drunken, the drug addict you can be healed. I am telling the ignorant today that you can be learned. The healing within this is actual. It is real. It exists. Just because I don't experience it doesn't, doesn't make, sorry, just because I am not experiencing this and I take this book and say that nothing in it is real doesn't make it not real. It is because I have not applied myself to its understanding or... I have been improperly taught from it or I have ignored it. But my friends, everything within it is based on a principle. Everything in it is based on a person that is real. The opening pages of it, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God. Not that he had a beginning, but the beginning as we know it to be now, the, create, the beginning of the creation of all things on earth, God brought it forth. He cannot and never can have a beginning because for him to have a beginning, what brought him forth is God, not him. He is in all things. He is all things. By him, everything exists and consists and is sustained. And so if you cannot believe the opening statement of the Bible, in the beginning, God, you have a problem. You will not be ready to accept what is contained within its pages called healing. Even when all evidence before you suggests that he is most certainly real. And you need his healing. There is not a person in the world today who does not need his healing. The circumstances alone of this deteriorating world tells us we are in desperate need of his healing. The futile efforts of humanity to save this planet will continually come to naught until the supreme end. The efforts of humanity should be in their healing because the world as it is cannot be healed. It will be destroyed and remade. 
Go with me to the book of Hebrews. Let us now go to the pages of the Bible. And I am telling you this today. Let us pray so that you and I can approach this thing in the right way, my brothers and sisters. I need you to pray. I need you to pray to God right now that you get this, that this is the beginning of your application of the medication that has prescribed for your condition. Father in heaven, in the mighty name of Jesus, I bring to you every single person who's watching this right now. I simply ask for their understanding. Number one, the confirmation that what I am speaking is the truth as it is in your word. Number two, when it is confirmed that it is the truth, that they take it and meditate on it and study it. And therefore, your spirit will apply it into their very core being. And whatever the problem is today that we all need to be healed from, I pray in Jesus' name that we are. I believe it by faith. Let all your people believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. You are relaxed. You're on the couch. The therapist will now minister to each and every one of us as we need it the most. Hebrews 2, from verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise to part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is who? The devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily, the Bible says, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. He came in human flesh. In him was God, the spirit of God within him. He took on him not the spirit, flesh, the spirit uh, being of an angel. He came in the flesh. You could have touched him. You could have pinched him. You could have hurt him. You could see his tears. He was hungry. He was tired. He was thirsty like any man. He was tried. He was tempted like any man. And the Bible says, Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be what? A merciful, a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. To make reconciliation for the sins of the people. That's why the Bible says we have a high priest who is acquainted with what we are going through. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted. He is able to succor them that are tempted. He qualifies as our therapist. He understands what we are going through. He experienced life on earth. He defeated our enemy. The Bible says, what did he do? He, the Bible says, through death, destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Go to Job 14, 10. Job 14 and verse 10. Job chapter 14. And verse number 10, listen to what the Bible says. But man dieth and wasteth away, the Bible says. Yea, man giveth up the ghost and where is he? That is an inescapable fact. The living know that they will die. Why? Drive past any cemetery. The living know that they will die. Listen to the news. The living know that they will die. How much family are we missing in this present day? The living know that they will die. Ecclesiastes 2. Ecclesiastes 2, 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. 
and verse 16. Listen to what the Bible says. As Solomon evaluated life in Ecclesiastes 2, he said, listen, there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which now in the days to come shall be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man? As the fool. The grave does not distinguish that which is educated from that which is not. The grave does not distinguish that which is rich from that which is poor. The grave does not distinguish religious persuasion. The grave does not distinguish tall or short. There is a casket for everybody. There is a, the, the, the sea is full of the perished. My brothers and my sisters, death is an acquaintance to all men. Death, thanatos, separation from life. There is a definition that says death subjugates men, confines men to his dark power. Death, my friends, subjugates, brings under dominion. Death is darkness. Death is separation from life. Death is an end. And man continues to think. And man continues to wonder. Life after death. Man creates doctrines that he might live by. To comfort him. That when he dies. He is in some other place that is good. Man comforts himself. To say that when he dies. What he knows to be his soul. Is reincarnated. And reborn over and over again. To give him the comfort that there is nothingness. Job says, where is he? He dies, where is he? Death is one of the greatest problems that we have in this world, my brothers and my sisters. The psychotherapist, the supreme psychotherapist said to us, he experienced death that he might destroy him that had the power of death the devil, and he would free now those who were all their lifetime subject to bondage. They were brought in dominion by death. Let me tell you something. Madness, hopelessness, sadness, stress, faithlessness, all the other S's that you can imagine in the construct of your mind. The therapist goes deeper and says, your problem is death. Even when you're alive, you are still in bondage to death. So the therapist now has now arrived at what did I say? The unconscious meaning and motivations of some of the human problems that we have unconsciously we are in bondage to death unconsciously because we are in bondage to death we live a miserable existence in this world the mind is distorted and broken with the concept of death why did my brother or sister or father or mother or friend have to die why am I getting old? The man I once was in my spry teens. I can feel my body deteriorating. Why am I lying on this bed on the verge of death? I don't care anymore. I'm just going to end my life through death. You can twist it any way that you want. Madness, hopelessness, sadness, stress, faithlessness, hatred, jealousy, envy... Everything that you can imagine has a root cause called death, which is an unconscious bondage in the hearts and minds of many people. You can strip away all the barriers that separate us by status, by class. One event confounds many in the world. Sin brought it called death. Now, the therapist, and I want us to understand, 
The therapist doesn't just want to tell you the problem. The wonderful work of the therapist is that he or she wants you to arrive at the problem. Are you listening to me? Many people today want to be told what the problem is. God designed his word and the relationship with him that you and I arrive at the problem. Let me tell you, I don't care if you don't want to admit the problem to others. At least admit to oneself, yourself, myself, admit to ourselves that we have a problem. The therapist will make you talk and talk and talk and talk and talk some more until you arrive at the fact that you need to admit there is a problem. Maybe you did something. Maybe something was done to you. Maybe both. But you must arrive at the problem. And you must be convinced that there is a problem. Many people today are going through the world. There is no problem. So there is no need for God. They cannot, by their unbelief, remove the problem that exists within them. The Bible says in the book of Romans 3 and verse 23, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. There is no distinction. All have sinned. Romans 5.12 By one man, sin entered the world, corrupted the world, and so the enemy death. Passed upon all men. I said earlier, the way we think affects how we feel. When we think in the realms of death, we feel death and we live like death. Cognitive therapy says, where does the focus lie? You discover that you have a problem. You have been focused unconsciously on that problem for so long. It has defined your life and you don't even know it. Go to 2 Corinthians 5. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians 5. Look at 21 of 2 Corinthians 5. The therapist did something that I want us to understand. Listen to what it says. For he have made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin. God sent his son in the likeness of humanity, made him to be sin, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Where does the focus lie? And where does he want to take us? You see, the therapist wants you to first recognize that there is a problem. And the therapist wants you to understand that there is a solution for the problem. So your focus is now, your focus is shifted. Yes, you have a problem. Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you. You have identified your problem. Now your mind must be taken to the solution. The therapist says, I was made sin for you. I didn't know sin. I never performed. I never did anything wrong. I am the spotless lamb. But in being, in becoming you as a human and dying what is the wages of sin, I now present to you the righteousness of God in me. I took upon death. And now that I live, I live forever as righteousness. Go to Isaiah 53. Go to Isaiah 53. 7 to 11. Isaiah 53. 7 to 11. I pray, brothers and sisters, that you're not just listening to this today. I want this to be able to speak to you today. But I want you to be able to take it in through the Spirit of God that is bringing it to you. Be quiet. Don't necessarily focus 
on, on, on just everything around you. Focus on the spirit of God prayerfully now. The Bible says, as it was predicted of Christ, the Bible says, listen, look at verse 6, Isaiah uh, 53. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Problem identified. Even those who ignored him, even those who don't even believe, they don't understand. Their solution is in him. Even those who reject him, even those who malign him, even those who curse his name, laid on him was the iniquity of us all. The solution is right there. You pass by it every single day. You open the medicine cabinet. And the medication is before you. But you are looking at the medication every day and saying, I don't believe you. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his sharers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge, shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities, and now present himself before them, to be accepted by them. And he will bring healing to their life. Earlier we shared. Identifying the problem. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. By one man's sin entered the world. And so death passed upon all men. The therapist has identified the problem. But the therapist takes us from the problem to the solution. Look at Romans 3.24. In comparison to Romans 3.23. Being justified freely by his grace through redemption in Jesus Christ. There's the solution here. Justified freely by the grace through the redeeming aspect of Jesus Christ, death and resurrection. Look at Romans 5. Let's do 17 through 21. Of Romans 5 solution personified yes by one man sin entered the world so death passed upon all men the Bible says in Romans 5 17 for if by one's man if by one man's offense death reigned by one so listen much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Your problem identified. Someone did something and you inherited the choice. You inherited the repercussions of the choice that they made. Someone did something to you. Someone abused you. Someone maligned you. Someone spoke something about you. Your past is distorted. But the, the, the great physician says here, yes, by one man's offense, you are maligned. By one man's offense, you are broken. By one man's offense, you are devastated. But another man did come. Another man did come and repair the breach. Where is your thought process? Are you stuck in the pain of your past? Are you stuck in the brokenness of your former? Is your past 
a present reality of destruction in your life. Do you understand? By the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. My brothers and my sisters, the law entered and condemned and made to light that which was wrong, that the offense might abound, that you might realize, wait a minute, I am really broken. When you identify the problem, you will also identify the level of brokenness that you are experiencing. When you identify the problem, you will, you will be awakened to how very tormented you really are. When you identify the problem, you, it will come to light. The abuse that you have suffered, it will be replayed in your mind. You will, you will relive what was done to you. When you identify the problem, which is why many go to great lengths to suppress that which was done to them to their own destruction. Do not be afraid to have the problem brought to light. Take the hurt and understand this. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Where sickness resides, where brokenness exists, where abuse torments, where demons inhabit, grace, Jesus Christ, the power of God is waiting to enter to rid you of everything. I am not talking conjecture. I'm not reciting to you a fairy tale. I need you to believe this. Because I do. I do. I need us all to believe this. That as sin have reigned unto death. You listen to me. Your brokenness has reigned in your life. And it is killing you. Your pain is reigning in your life. It is killing you. How long will you stand by and allow your pain, your brokenness to kill you? As sin have reigned unto death, even so my grace reigned through righteousness unto eternal life, eternal life, by Jesus Christ our Lord. Past thinking says this. Why did Adam and Eve had to do this to me? Why on earth did Satan do this? Why on earth didn't God take care of Satan? Why didn't God take care of Adam and Eve? Why did I have to be born into this world? Why did my father have to come into my room? Why did my mother beat me mercilessly? Why did this person use and abuse me? Why did my friends forsake me? Why did my husband marry me and cheat on me? Why did my wife do this to me? Why, oh why, oh why? What am I? I, I hate myself. I'm a loser. Nobody likes me. Why was I born? Past thinking kills. Murderer, liar, thief, sexual deviant, immoral, ungodly, profane, suicidal, witch, wizard, what are you thinking through? Because what you're thinking through is shaping your life and it is killing you and I. 
bad parenting, mental, physical, emotional abuse, incomplete parenting, false teaching. My church, my church didn't teach me right. I was too privileged. What's behind our concept of life? You see, many people kill in this world. Many people lie, cheat, and steal. Many people beat their spouses. Many people cheat on their spouses. Many people do all types of evil in this world. But the projections of the human is not always the problem. It is the unconscious, the, the unconscious thoughts and motivations. That's why humanistic and in and integrative therapy is important because it deals with the unconscious motivation. You spend time with anybody for too long, murderer, liar, thief, sexual deviant, witch, and wizard, you will find that there was a path that led to that point. We condemn them for what they are, but we never take time to understand the unconscious motivation. That's what God does. That's what God does better than anybody. That's why only he qualifies to the saving of one's soul. Only he qualifies to the restoration of the human. Go to Jeremiah 18 and look at this. Jeremiah 18, 4 to 6. Jeremiah 18, 4 through 6. Listen to what God says. Maybe you've read it before. Think about it in a different light. The Bible says, The Lord said to Jeremiah, Go to the potter's house. I will cause you to hear my words. But I want you to watch the potter at work so that you can understand what I am telling you. You think the prophets knew everything? God had to have them live out the teaching. See it. So that when he speaks, you get it. He says, go watch the potter work. And I will cause you to hear me. So Jeremiah says, I went down and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. What did he do? He made it again another vessel. As it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, house of Israel. Gatherings, congregations, groups like this one facilitate distribution of information learning wisdom understanding is personal with God it's personal with God and it's personal to God you see God wants to mold you and shape you but you need to be in his hand God employs humanistic and integrative therapy. Even if you and I have the same problem past, the solution and the arrival of the solution may not be the same. You see, you cannot depend on how I study the Bible for you to study. Many people try to tell you how to do things. You need to arrive at the solution to your problem as God had you arrive at the problem. What I did was necessary for me. What you have to do is what's necessary for you, even though our problems are the same. We try to live the Christian life through the prism of somebody else's life. I am here today to awaken you to your need to be in God's hand. So that he can, mo you see what the Bible says? As it seemeth good to the potter, he made the clay. The clay cannot mold itself. The mud clay must depend on the potter to make it as he wants it. 
when you're talking to a guy who molded clay in solution Cassius Comprehensive. You have a piece of clay in your hand. It is your mind and your creativity that is put in that clay. And you mold and shape it as you will to what you desire it to be. The clay doesn't know what it needs to be. You know. It's a lump. All the clay has to be is malleable, workable, with water so that the potter can mold it. Not try to shape itself. Not be too tough. Knowing what is wrong with us makes us vulnerable. Excellent position where God exactly wants us to be. Trying to be tough in brokenness is destructive. The Bible says of Israel, if you read further in Jeremiah 18, let's just look at a few verses. You know what the Lord says? In verse 10, God says, if it do evil in my sight, the nation, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. God is saying simply this, I cannot bless evil. I need Israel to be in my hand. I need, sorry, I need Israel to abide in me. I need Israel to follow my statutes, my judgments, my precepts. If you depart from me, I cannot bless you. When I cannot bless you, I leave you to all the demonic forces of the world. So God says now, go and speak to the men of Judah. To the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Return ye now, everyone, from your evil way. Make your ways and your doings good. You know what they said? There is no hope. But we will walk after our own devices. We will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. Is that what you're saying to the therapist today? You are so broken that there is no hope. You are so abused there is no hope. When you say there is no hope and you limit the greatest power to change you, you will walk in your evil way. Let the therapist work. There is hope. My brother, my sister, today there is hope. Romans 11.34 There is hope. Romans 11.34 I am not offering you hope from my own strength. The great therapist is. Romans 11.34 Who have known the mind of the Lord who has been his counselor? Even your therapists on earth have therapists. Because your therapist cannot contain all the patients that he has and the information that he or she is receiving. They need their own therapist because it can be damaging to them. The Bible says, who knows the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? He is qualifying himself as the most supreme therapist that anybody can ever have. The greatest healer that you can ever know. Now go to 1 Corinthians 2.16. Listen to what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 2.16. Again, who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. We are not at, at variance with God. We are not enemies of God. We understand the things pertaining to God because information flows from him to us. We have identified the problem. We have identified the solution. So we live our, ourselves now a channel through which he works. We are vulnerable and weak before him. We are clay in his hands. We don't know the right hand from the left hand. We don't know what tomorrow brings. But our trust and our assurance is that we are in his hands every moment of the day. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. Christ did not think himself so highly to be like God, to become like one of us, to die. So God exalted him. Look at John 15, 15. 
We have the mind of Christ. What does that mean? John 15, 15, Christ says, Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. All things that pertaineth to righteousness is known to us. All things that pertaineth to our healing is known to us. We are of the inheritance of Christ himself. We are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. Go to 2 Corinthians 8, 12. I have few words to say. The therapist is taking us home. 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 12. Listen to what the Bible says. If there be first what? A willing mind. It is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he have not. Read that again prayerfully. If there first, if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he have not. You think you need to be perfect before you can make your approach to God? Who perfects you? What you have is a willing mind. That is counted as your blessing. God is not looking to what you have not. Because what you have not, he will give. You have a willing mind today. Are you expecting your healing today? Are you willing to submit today? Are you willing to give it all? Are you willing to give up all your efforts to heal yourself? And place yourself in the hand of the Supreme Therapist. Proverbs 24. Our last two scriptures. Proverbs 24. 3 and 4. Proverbs 24. 3 and 4. Through wisdom is a house builded. And by understanding, the house is established. Our house was ruined by death. By the circumstances that befell us in whatever situations we were in in our lives. A broken house. A house condemned. A house that many says has no hope. A house that will amount to nothing. Even the very abusers that have abused you tell you, you will amount to nothing. Even today unapologetically, they look at you as if they did nothing. But the Bible tells you today, through wisdom, a house is builded. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Through the fear of God, through your submission to God, your house is building. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. And by understanding, you are established. And when your abuser sees you and you are walking high and mighty in the power of God, they are confounded how you could have even gotten over your abuse without them saying, I am sorry. You can even walk to them and say, I forgive you. And have a smile on your face. Say, I'm praying for you. When your house is established, demons flee. When your house is established, abuse has no place. When your house is established, your enemies are confounded. When your house is established, the pit that was dug for you is filled with your enemies who dug it themselves. For by wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war. And in multitude of counselors, there is safety. In a multitude of divine therapists, my friends, you are safe. Philippians 4, 8 and 9. Philippians 4, 8 and 9 of Philippians chapter 4. Finally, brethren. Finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, 
whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard as seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. Today, what you have learned, what you have received, what you have heard, do. And the God of peace shall be with you, shall renew you, shall forgive you, should you be a perpetrator, and shall restore you according to his wisdom and according to his understanding. My brothers and sisters, the word of God is spoken. That's all the Lord had me to share with you today. I'm going to play a song that Sister Sadia sung earlier, now sung by Elvis Presley. I want you to meditate on that song. It is an appeal song of sorts for us this evening. I don't know what your condition is where you are right now. But God does. And he's simply waiting for you to come to him for your healing today. The song asks the question, is your burden heavy? What are you carrying? What of your past is condemning you to death? Reach out to Jesus. Because you know what? He's reaching out to you. My apologies. I want it to be loud and clear, my brothers and my sisters. I'm sorry, the wrong phone is connected. The enemy will not work today. My apologies. My apologies, yes.
at the end of this message. One, you can continue going along life, fooling yourself, believing that everything is okay when it is not. Number two, continue not admitting that there is a problem. And number three, not even believe in all this that I just said. There's nothing else that I can do. The Spirit of the Lord is the one doing the work from this point moving forward. Or you can actually realize these things and put them into practice. And that's my goal for myself, my brothers and my sisters. I trust that it is yours today. I invite you to pray with me as we close. Heavenly Father, your message has been spoken. And I believe someone today has been touched, as even I was, in the preparation and delivery of this message. Dear Father, each and every eye that is watching this right now live, someone is watching this as you have motivated, motivated them to watch it later today. Someone is watching this during the course of the week. It is intended for every person that is watching it. You led them to it for a reason. And so I pray for each and every person today and the work that your spirit is doing on their hearts right now. I simply ask, dear Lord, that you help your people. Help their unbelief where unbelief is. And I pray, dear Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Lord, I pray that you will help us. I pray that you will minister to us. I pray that you will deliver. I pray that you will heal. I pray that you will put the pieces back together again in the shattered life. I pray that you will eradicate the demons that are possessing somebody right now. I pray, dear Lord, that you will put aside the brokenness by abuse, mental, physical, emotional, verbal. Somebody is suffering from it today in the name of Jesus Wash it out of the life and bring healing and forgiveness to the life of this person. Somebody watching may have been a perpetrator and they feel so guilty. In Jesus' name, help them to understand forgiveness. You want to forgive them and you want them to heal as well. I am limited in my knowledge. Everybody who's on, everybody who's watching after it is live, you know. Just do your magnificent work in their lives and my life. I thank you. Because I have not prayed to a cow. I have not prayed to gold and silver. I have not prayed to a tree, nor the moon, nor the stars, nor the sun. I have prayed to the Creator. I have prayed to the Redeemer. I have prayed to the one true God in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. And so I am thankful that you have heard my prayer. I am thankful that the hearts that have been lifted up to you right now, you hear. And the healing that needs to take place will be done. And so I give you glory. I give you praise. I give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, have a blessed day. God be with you in all your ways. Thank you for joining us today. May you spend the remainder, remaining portion of your day in meditation, in prayer. May God continue to minister to you. God bless you.